Good morning, Central friends and family. I am Leslie Tyson and I bring you greetings from Savannah, Georgia. I would like to welcome all of our visitors to this virtual worship experience. We are so thrilled that you have chosen Central as your place of worship this morning. If you could be so kind to like this video and share with your friends and family on Facebook. Please join me in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we thank you for everyone that has come to worship with us today. We trust completely in you. Please send your Holy Spirit to touch and inspire lives today. Fill us with your love. Fill our place with your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue with worship.
Central family. Here are our announcements for Sunday, November 29th. The United Methodist Student Day of Giving offering is today. This offering provides for over 70 scholarships available to United Methodist students to further their education and enrich the life of the church. Please give generously by indicating in your offering a financial gift to the Student Day of Giving. The annual Advent Revival with Ben Hill Central and Warren Memorial United Methodist Churches starts this evening. It will be a virtual Advent celebration. The theme for the revival is showing up the just God in an unjust world. The speakers for the revival are Sunday, November 29th at 6 p.m., Reverend Dr. Byron Thomas, Monday, November 30th at 7 p.m., Minister Tammy Brown Lattimore, and Tuesday, December 1st at 7 p.m., Reverend Dr. Valerie Bridgman. You can join this time of praise and celebration on Facebook.com slash Ben Hill UMC. Sunday, December 20th at 10 a.m. will be Central's Drive-In Worship Service. We had such a glorious time at our last drive-in service that we plan to do it again. Please stay tuned for more details. Georgia's runoff election for the two U.S. Senate seats is January 5th. Starting November 18th, you can request an absentee ballot. The deadline for unregistered voters is December 7th and early voting begins December 14th. We can't sit this one out. Make sure you, your family, and friends in Georgia vote. Thank you, Central Family, for your generous gifts that support our ministries. There are four ways you can give. One, use our website, centralumcatl.org. Two, text your giving to 73256 in the message type Central UMC in all caps. Three, Mail your gift to the church office, 501 Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Southwest, or you can also use Cash App, dollar sign C-U-M-C-A-T-L. Please go to our website or our email newsletter, The Source Blast, for additional information on events happening at Central. darkness to light to take what is wrong and make right. The prophet Isaiah reminded us that there is work to be done. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert and highway for our God. When God comes in, then healing is to be found. But we need to make the way. Prepare the way. Declare, declare and demonstrate the way. So, we light these candles as a sign of our faith 
that beyond COVID and racism, past greed and sexism, despite exclusion and gossip, the God we worship is not far from us and that we can clear the way for that God to come and dwell with us. We light these candles in faith that divine help is coming. An expectation out of a, out of, out of a faith that will still dare, we say, Oh, come, oh, come in. scripture lesson this morning is taken from begins at the 13th chapter of Mark verse 24 but in those days after that suffering the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in heaven will be shaken then they will see the son of man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson as soon as this branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves. You know that summer is near. So also, when you see those things taking place, you know that he is near at the gates, at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or at dawn, or else you may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This has been the word of God for the people of God. And the people of God says, thanks, thanks be to God. God. Good morning, Central family. My name is Alexandra Kenny, and I'm a junior student athlete attending Berry College. I hope that you and your family are all doing well and staying safe this holiday season. I would like to invite you to pray with me today. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for allowing us to gather in this space and to worship on Zoom and be here in deep communication with you. Lord, we come humbly before you and ask that you cleanse our hearts of every fault and renew a right spirit within us. Lord, I ask that you open our hearts and our minds and spirits today that we might receive your word. Examine our souls, God, and expose our motives to reveal what we need to understand. May we learn from your word, God, and internalize it and apply it to our lives. Let us be transformed today. We love you, Lord, with all of our mind, our heart, and our soul. God, we commit to trusting you with our whole being. I declare, Lord, that you be in each and every part of our lives today and every day. Help us to lean more on you, to trust you, and to grow in our purpose, our unique purpose that you design within each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, I ask all of this and more. I pray. Amen. Ooh, mm -hmm. Who am I to have your ear when 
Whenever I call your name And who am I to be forgiven When certain things just don't change And I haven't done a thing to deserve your favor Your grace And after all the hurt I've caused you Lord, I must say You got me wondering why Oh, why mm, Why Oh, why yeah. Why oh. Question in my mind. Why, why, Lord? Why isn't me, Jesus? Please tell me. Why, 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 why? I know the word and the what is love, and it's sin from up above, something I'm not worthy of. I know the who and the who, who is, is you My Alpha and Omega, your Daddy and your Savior I know the win and it's over and over again You proved to be my friend from the morning till PM And I don't have a spectacular bone in my body But you love me anyway So for that I just want to say Thank you Good morning, Central family. It is so good to be worshiping with you in your homes this Sunday. My name is Reed, and I'm one of the student interns here at Central UMC. I wanted to start by thanking Pastor Ross and Pastor Angie for their guidance and mentorship over the last year and a half. And I want to thank all of you for opening up the doors of your church, receiving me in, and making me feel so at home here. I am honored that our pastors asked me to share a message with you this Sunday. And I want to start with a verse from our scripture reading, Mark 13, that grabbed my attention and made me think about this holiday season in a new way. It reads, Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. Keep awake. With this invitation from Jesus, the Advent season commences. Advent is a time of waiting. It's a time of anticipation. On this first Sunday of Advent, the global church hears a mandate from Jesus to keep awake. Staying awake requires a certain vigilance. 
and mindfulness. During this season, we are reminded to be attentive to the subtle and beautiful ways God is already at work in our lives. It is tightly and profoundly captured in the name Emmanuel, God with us. But Advent is also a pilgrimage. It is a journey we will take together here at Central United Methodist Church over the course of the next few weeks as we stay awake in anticipation for Christ entering our lives in new and unexpected ways. There is a sense of possibility in this new season, a chance of being awakened or being shaken up to God breaking into our lives with love, compassion, forgiveness, and mercy. This is a time of awakened waiting. You may be saying, but I've been locked in my house for months. All we are doing is waiting. And I know I've been there too. We are waiting for a cure. We are waiting for an end to this weariness and worrying. We are waiting to get back to our normal lives. We have all taken a master class in patience these past few months. We've been cooped up, following CDC guidelines, listening to experts. We are doing what we need to do to keep our families, neighbors, and communities safe. We are waiting. But what our scripture today helps us realize is that there is a difference between waiting and waiting well. Mark 13, 32 through 37 says, but what about the day and hour, neither the angels in heaven nor the sun, but only the father knows. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves his home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Our scripture recalls a parable spoken by Jesus about the necessity for watchfulness. Jesus paints an image of a man leaving his home on a journey. He puts his servants in charge of the house and sets them about their business. It does not serve us well to only be on guard or at work or respectful to others when someone is watching. It's like children who are only on their best behavior during the Christmas season because they know Santa is watching. You have to be good all year round, not just during the time Santa is checking his lists twice. So too, I think adults can be on their best behavior around Thanksgiving or Christmas, or try to get more pious around big moments in the life of the church like Easter. But it's not just us in the year 2020 who has these struggles and temptations. The Bible connects modern Christians to people and worshiping communities from centuries ago. Listen to this reading from Isaiah 64, the Old Testament accompaniment for our gospel reading this Sunday. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. Hmm. This passage speaks of a loud and forceful God, who makes his presence known through quaking mountains and fire that causes water to boil, a God whose presence makes nations tremble. Sometimes I think this is what Christians are waiting for, when they ask God to enter their lives, when we are in times of trouble, when we're down and out, when we can't seem to hold on much longer, we get on our knees and beg for a sign, oh Lord, are you there? We look for a burning bush. Advent reminds us that in the quiet of this season, 
in the soft winter of waiting. In careful and subtle ways, God dwells among us too. Yes, God is capable of shaking mountains and boiling waters. But our God is also there with us in the silence. Emmanuel, God with us, has nothing to prove. We have these weeks of Advent to get into the Spirit. What a joyous time of preparation and openness. The mindfulness of the Advent season reminds me of this poem from Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Earth's crammed with heaven and every common bush a fire with God, but only she who sees takes off her shoes. The rest sit round and pluck blackberries. What I love about this poem is that it asks us to see the extraordinary in the ordinary. Every common bush of fire with God reminds us that God is the maker and creator of the world around us, that God cannot be contained. We observe the holiness, taking off our shoes to symbolize sacred ground and to try to see God around us. In this same way, we will be observing the holy practice of Advent from our homes this year. We'll celebrate Christmas not in a grand sanctuary, ornate with garland and candles and perfumes, but in the common dens and living rooms and armchairs of our homes. We will bring the magnificence of Christmas, the joys of the child Messiah, and the angels' hallelujah chorus to the same place where we cut onions for our dinner, to the very sofa where we too often lose the remote, and to the carpet we probably should vacuum more frequently. Yes, this holiday season will look a little different this year, but our God remains the same, and maybe, just maybe, as we strip away some of the garland and ornaments and flair with which we tend to shroud the celebration of Christmas, will make us a little more easier and attentive to the subtle and slow work of God in our hearts. Jesus' message through the parables is be aware, keep alert, keep awake. This Advent season, let us avoid distraction and keep as our object of attention the coming of our Lord. We're already in our homes. Our shoes are already off. Let us observe the sacred space around us the way that God is interacting in our lives and changing our hearts. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as we prepare to celebrate and remember your birth, help us to better see and understand the meaning of the great mystery of your incarnation. Keep us mindful of your life and love, and may the depth of both continue to deepen within us. Amen. If you are watching and haven't given your life to Christ yet, the banquet doors are open. Central would love to be your church. Pastor Angie and Pastor Ross would love to be your pastors. I am a proud new member of Central United Methodist Church. I can vouch for the love, warmth, and kindness you will find here even during a pandemic. Visit the website at centralumcatl.org to be in touch with the church. Our team will reach out to share next steps on how to join this community. Thank you for being with us this Sunday. Blessings. Oh, Vance P. Ross is my name. I am the appointed senior pastor of the Central United Methodist Church, the church at the heart of the city, with the city at heart, and I remain peacock brown and hallelujah happy to be the pastor there. Thank you for being with us in worship today, and thank you for celebrating God this first Sunday in Advent with us, led by our worship design team and our life group, Living in Full Effect, our young adults. They bring on every fifth Sunday innovation, creativity, inspiration, motivation, and a sense that all these can be combined by God for transformation. 
And that is what we invite you to now. If Almighty God has moved in your heart, as Reed Howard has preached his heart out today as part of our intergenerational, radically inclusive, Christ-centered congregation, if the music and the prayers and scripture have touched you, we invite you now to a commitment. We invite you to pray in your own way that Almighty God and Jesus would touch your heart. No, infect your heart. No, invade your heart by the power of the Spirit that you would become a follower, not simply a believer, but a follower of Jesus, one who acts on that in which they believe. It's that simple. Just give yourself to Jesus. Jesus wants you and will receive you. And if you feel so moved, or we'd love to have you come and be a part of the Central United Methodist Church, oh yes, Pastor Angela Johnson and I would love to be your pastors, and the Central United Methodist Church would love to be your church. The place where you worship and the place out of which you give and serve. We look forward to hearing from you. You can contact us through the comment line. You can contact us through this email, info at centralumcatl.org. Or you can contact us by making a phone call, 404-524-4263. Thank you. Also, on today, on this fifth Sunday, this Sunday we're led by our young adults, our life group, Family, please be sure you know, this is United Methodist Student Day. It is one of our six days of special offering, and it is a day when the special offering goes to scholarships for young people headed to college. Scholarships that help people with graduate study. Oh, family, you need to know that many people have been able to be in school, to be educated without debt, because of the giving of Methodists, particularly United Methodists. So we ask you to give what you can. We ask you to be liberal. We want to be sure that we're helping our young people get through school with no debt, not just minimal, no debt. So we thank you for that. Let us pray. God, thank you for this opportunity to give after we have been so blessed by worship and the word the word in preaching, the word in poetry, and the word in song. Now, God, we give of our tithes and offering and this special gift, United Methodist Student Day, that somebody might be blessed in their career and going forward and may have, a, have and be a blessing to others. We love you. We thank you. We believe you'll multiply these gifts. In Jesus' name. Oh, family, thank you for over 600 people that engaged us last week in worship. We had a different number for our YouTube and others, but by way of engagements on Facebook and YouTube, we had over 600. So we thank you for those engagements and ask you to remember, invite someone to be with us in worship virtually next Sunday. They only come because you invite them. Remember, invite someone to be with us in worship. And remember, we count people. Why? Because people count. That's right. Because people count. Please look this way. God loves you. Do you know God loves you? Oh, family, do you know God loves you? Yeah, yeah, God loves you. God is blessing you. Do you know you're blessed? Do you know you're blessed? Yes, we are blessed. When God blessed you, when God blessed me, God did not have just us in mind. So please take your blessing. Take it. Oh, but share your blessing. Be a blessing. I guarantee through you, God's world will be blessed. Oh, then may the peace, the power, the love, and the promises of the Almighty God may it be yours now and forever. We will change the game in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday in worship. You take good care. Keep the faith. Be safe. Wear your mask. As always, be well.